Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Hi and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with Dr. Michael Rice. Our call number is 646-200 4169. Press 1 if you have a comment or a question. We'd love to hear from you. Yesterday we had caller after caller, and that was awesome. That helps take the show in the direction that you, the listener, want to take it. We have a couple people in the chat room, a couple people on the switchboard. David's with us already. Welcome, Michael. Michael? Thank you, sweetie. I'm here. I was just uh, getting my mute button. Turned off. So welcome everybody to the show. Delighted that you're here. It is an awesome day in South Florida. Let's see, it's about uh, probably 75 degrees, sunny, absolutely beautiful. And we're here with an invitation, as we do every day, for you to become part of the team that changed the world. How are we going to do that? Well. What we're going to do is we are going to eliminate war from planet Earth. How are we going to do that? Well, here's the scoop. If you have some form of hostility or fear in you, you probably have somebody to blame. You think it belongs to somebody else. And that's your mind's lie. Once you recognize that, then you start to work with removing the very capacity to produce any form of hostility or fear. Of course, there's never been a war that didn't involve somebody having hostility towards someone else, someone having fear of someone else. And so if you as an individual, if we as a community of individuals, literally remove the very capacity to experience any form of hostility or fear, the reason for war will disappear. When we can get a critical mass of people to make the shift into that, then we're going to see a change on the planet. So that's what we're working toward. And we invite you to be part of the team that changed the world. If you If that sounds unfathomable, if that sounds impossible, then what I invite you to do is to go to our website, www.whyagain.com, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheet. Please click on that link, and the first four items will explain to you. The first four links under Download Worksheet will give you all the tools you need to literally... Believe it or not, it is possible to do to literally remove all hostility or fear from your world. And the interesting thing is nothing in the external world needs to change for you to do that. But what you will tend to find is things in your external world will start to change when you do that. So welcome to the show. We're delighted to be with you. As Jeannie said, our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Jeannie, do we have David? Do we have Dr. Tim with us today? Hello, Jeannie. Tim You're is, on. David's with us, but Tim is not. Oh, cool. Okay. 
David, how do you be today, sir? I'm doing well, Michael. Thank you very much. Glad to hear that you guys have such beautiful weather there today. It's turning a little wintry here in Heartland. Uh, it's about 40 degrees overcast and pretty typical weather for January, though we've been experiencing some absolutely incredibly gorgeous weather over the last uh, week or two. Uh, not much of a uh, uh, a winter uh, compared to the last several years, and it's pretty typical for this time of the year here at Heartland. So doing well, um, eagerly uh, being part of uh, the next process of building and creating whatever project that we're working on at the time. Awesome. Well, do you have anything to share with us today? Uh Nothing comes to mind, you know. Uh, I think it's great that the uh, the participation with the with the uh, call-ins, and I, I didn't hear whether there was anyone that was in line or not to ask any questions. It's it's great to have the uh, folks call in with their questions, so that there can be a new uh, uh, creating a new reality around uh, what it is that's going on. You know, my thing is. Uh, but that live interaction, uh, when people call in with, you know, this is what's real and what's up in my life today, it is awesome uh, to be able to interact. And, and, you know, sometimes people say, oh, well, I'm not going to call in because they don't have time for me. But actually, your question is everybody's question. So if you have a question for us, we would be most appreciative to hear your sweet voice. We would love to hear it because your question is everybody's question. And when you get your question answered, who knows? You might get my question answered. I, you know, one of the blessings I get to do with uh, traveling all over the globe and interacting with people from all kinds of different cultures, all different walks of life, all professions, from the street sweeper to the, uh, you know, to the Indian chief, uh, I, I get to participate in the developed ability to ask questions. And the awesome thing about that is that what's really important is not the answers. What's really important is the questions. Because there is a power in us which which holds all the answers. One of the practices in order to get to those answers, and I think it was Emerson that said it was, you've got to get your bloated nothingness out of the way. When you can get the non-being part of your mind to shut up and you ask the right and relevant question, there is a power in you that will respond by the law of resonance with exactly the answer that you need. So, you know, that's what we're here to practice and do and support others in learning to do, and that's all I do with the, uh, the answers that we come forward with. Of course, I've done a little, you know, I think it's been probably five years now. I've been saying I've been doing this for 40 years. So uh, so I've been uh, practicing and, and building brain cells. And uh, so we've, we've got some information to share, some principles, some understanding, and in particular the tool of forgiveness. So that's really uh, the core and the key to everything that we're doing. So we're delighted to be sharing with you. Thank you for being here. 646-200-4169. Ginny, do we have any questions? Comments, chat room, or otherwise? Uh, no, there's only uh, two people now in the chat room, and no questions going on there. And we, yes, we do have a hand up. Area code six oh seven. You're on the air. Who do we have? It's Richard. Like How Richard. Is hey, it's hey, Richard. Richard. How is everybody? We're absolutely Fine. blessed and highly favored, enjoying uh, the beginning of the best year yet of our eternal lives. It's an awesome time to be alive, and we are enjoying it. Well, I just want to relay a wonderful, a, a, a belly laugh experience I had yesterday. I, uh, uh, one of my uh, per- people that I'm sharing my house with uh, was downstairs, and uh, I happened to get up and uh, came downstairs, and, and, and they didn't know I was there. They came out of the kitchen and saw me and, uh, it, you know, spooked them, and they got startled. And, uh, of course, I was looking out the window at my, my cats, 
and startled me. So we both startled each other and we're both laughing like hyenas afterwards with belly laughs. And then the other interesting thing is is that I went to work last night and um and uh I'm walking in there's a huge truck there to uh you know, guy delivering nitrogen with a with a hard hat on and glasses and ear muffs and he didn't see me walking in either and and, and when I came around the uh truck uh I startled him. So yesterday was for some reason or other my presence and being was startling everybody, but it was just a, it was just a, it was just a uproarious laughter yesterday about the whole thing. I just wanted to now, relay that. Yeah, to laugh at ourselves, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to relay the joys and blessings of uh, being able to uh, let go and be free and enjoy life. Well, Richard, you know, you've been doing the forgiveness work now for better than a year, uh, or I guess close to a year. And and just, just as a, a, a comparison, if you went back a year ago uh, on uh, January the, what is it, the 10th, would your day have been a day filled with laughter? Has that been your normal day a year ago? Uh, probably not. I don't remember, but, uh, certainly, uh, this was a unusual day yesterday. That's for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, certainly one of the fruits of doing the work is that the heaviness, the drama, the trauma, you know, the, uh, the idea of drama and trauma being something outside of us is such a fallacy that we've been tricked into. And when you let go of that and realize you can just piece by piece by piece, Unload all of the drama and trauma in your life. It's absolutely awesome because you get to play and live without it. You just get to let go of it, and uh, it is such a blessing, isn't it? So thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Delighted. Glad to be on the team, Richard. We look forward to having you at teacher training last year. For those who haven't met Richard, he was at our uh, Nine Day Wise is happening to me again last summer at Heartland and registered for teacher training. So we. Uh, we look forward to uh, to playing with you next uh, uh, next summer. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it myself. Awesome. Yeah, you know it's it's interesting. We've uh, we've had such a uh, a shift in the level of understanding with the tools that uh, I, I'm really excited about and looking forward to teachers training next year. This this year there was such a uh, an upgrade, so to speak, in people's understanding of the forgiveness process from previous years. It was just amazing. So it's cool. It's cool to be part of it. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Have a blessed day. Love you. You too. Jeannie, any other callers? Anything happening in the chat room to be aware of? Mm, We do have another caller. Area code 541, you're on the air. Who do we have? Hi there, Michael and Jeannie. It's Carolyn. Well, hi, Carolyn. How do you be? Well, um, I got kind of down in the dumps. Um, Is life giving you work. another opportunity to learn forgiveness? <laughs> That's awesome. I, I went out to lunch with a friend yesterday and uh, it was her birthday, uh, and I mean, it was her birthday a few days ago, and she knew that I had a story, and she said, "Why don't?" She's a psychologist, and she said, "Why don't you tell me about your life?" And I said, "Do you really want to hear all this? Because it's pretty sad." So she said she did, and so I told her. And uh, I came away feeling really sad. Like, um, you just know the tip of the iceberg, you all on the phone and you and uh, Jeannie, Michael. And, um, I mean, my life's been full of trauma and pain, and I don't usually talk about it because... 
it's hard for people to hear. Um, you know, they. I've had the experience many times in my life when I've shared a little tiny bit and people get sort of freaked out. Um, so, you know, I just work on myself and trying to be happy and the best person I can be every day and letting go of my negative thoughts every day as best as I can. That's a biggie for me. And I came home after having been with this woman and just felt really sad. And she was very wonderful about it, but I kind of was scared how she took it in. But uh, she wrote me an email last night, and she said she had no idea, and wow, I've sure come a long way, and uh, she can't imagine, uh, oh, I don't know, I guess she said something about the strength that I've had to have, and and it was very, you know, complimentary, so to speak. That's a dumb word, but um, I just felt sad looking back over all that and um, having to know when I came, you know, to work on myself and love myself. I felt very, very, very sad, and um, I saw a picture of myself as a little kid, like two or three, when I. Uh, sat on my my bed because it's in my bedroom and I just hugged myself and felt sad and cried a bit and um, I don't like looking back at all that because it makes me really sad and I realized that at my age I don't know how long I might have but I I want it to be happy, and I don't want to be be sad. I don't want to be around negative, complaining people. I I want to be around positive people who, you know, are a catalyst for my own positivity. So, and she wasn't being negative; she was being extremely positive and caring. But I just went into a whirlwind of sadness. Well, I'm so that's actually what I'm talking about. Yeah. Are you there? I can't hear you. I am. I am here. And I'm actually pretty excited for you. I think that's just <laughs> delightful that you're so sad. I think that's awesome. Because when I think back about um, probably eight weeks ago on your first call to us, the energy was that of angry and afraid. And we do a, we do a thing called the physiological effects of emotional suppression in our Empowered to Heal workshop. And we point out a a scale that people climb down and that healing is climbing back up out of that. And so my, my input to you would be is that you're moving up the ladder, and I think that's awesome. Instead of being lost in fear and anger, that you're able to touch into that sadness and you're able to start moving through it is is fabulous that you're right on track. Well, that's a wonderful way to respond to me. So thank you, Michael. Um, well, I'm I'm just delighted for you and excited for you. And I just invite you to keep doing your work because, as I said when I started the show out, nothing has to change in your world for you to dump all of the drama and trauma that your good old family feeling has carried into your life with you. Nothing needs to change except what's going on inside of you. And you're doing that. I, I agree with that. It's all my own. I, it's all, I manufacture all of it but all by myself. And you can forgive it all by right. yourself. And that's what you're doing. So you're right on track. It's fabulous. <laughs> it's fabulous. Well, and, well, you know, we, we didn't promise you a rose garden. You know, healing is no. not Dr. Feelgood, but it's healing. And you're right on track. Well, thank you for your compliment. I love it. And so I won't feel so bad. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad I raised my hand because... 
I didn't even want to get on this phone call today, but I heard that you didn't have a caller, and I figured, well, why not? There you go. And so we are here to join with you and to support you now in being able to heal your very capacity to generate sadness. And sadness well, is Michael, a result I've been, of loss. I've been, I've been, I've gone through major sadness all through my life. It hasn't been that. I'm just feeling it now. <sighs> you know, there's, I've felt it all through my life. I just, uh, but what I hear you saying is that the sadness is different. It's like. Um, I looked at the picture of my little self as a kid, and I thought, why did you have to go through so much pain, you know? And I think when I decided, if if you if we do decide to come on to planet Earth, that I must have signed up for everything that could possibly go wrong, just so I could get it all over with. <laughs> anyway... Um, Thank you for what you said. I'll take that in into my heart, and I appreciate that. And I really appreciate that you're out there for me. Hello? I say you want to start to look at what is the cause of sadness in the human system, and it is thoughts of loss. So you might start doing worksheets around all of the losses that you've experienced in your life. Loss of your experience of your true self, you know. You started out as a newborn, and this is pretty much common work for everybody on the planet, but you started out as this awesome presence of love called a newborn child. If you hold a newborn, you know exactly that, what that means, what that energy is. And then there was the loss of your newborn being. That will be your first maybe 77 times 70 worksheets. And then okay. will be loss of relationship with the love of father, perhaps loss of relationship with the, lo- with the love of mother, experiencing, you know, it's a child's birthright to experience mother and father as the absolute presence of love as well as ourselves. And so some worksheets around the loss of love of mother, the loss of love of father. If there were siblings, the loss of love of siblings. Uh, You know, take that all the way forward. If that loss was there, then the tendency would be to enter into uh, marriages and relationships where there will be the loss of relationship in the marriage, uh, where there will be the loss of relationship with children. So I'd, I'd start looking through your whole life, And that sadness is a projection of all of the brain cell content of all of those generations of loss. And, you know, that uh, living and lost in that sadness is called living in the desert, in the vernacular. And how do you get out of the desert? The old generation has to die off, they said. You know, the Jews did a two-week, what should have been a two-week journey in the desert, and it took them 40 years. What had to happen to get out of the desert? To get out of the desert, the, they said the old generation had to die off. That did not mean everybody in old physical bodies had to physically die. The root of the word generation is genari. It means cause. All of those causes had to go. So there are some clues to some of the work you'll do that hold this network of sadness within you. And as you let go of that, your natural newborn state will be renewed. And your newborn state will be one of aliveness, of joy, of enthusiasm, of excitement, of delight, just because you draw the breath of life. That's the natural state of the human. Everything else is artificially implanted in us by an insane culture. And as you choose to face all of that and start to forgive, that's the worksheet process, start to remove that, And I'm going to suggest you make a commitment to do five a day for the next 40 days. Each worksheet you do will put you in touch with another part of your own dissociated mind. 
and that in the ancient teachings, the dissociated mind was called the desert. Forty days in the desert will change your life forever. You don't have to live your life in sadness. But if you refuse to face and forgive, that is remove all of those thoughts of loss, then sadness will be your plight. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, we're absolutely delighted to get to play with you as often as we do. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. And I, I look forward to the day when we get face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball, and I get to hug your neck. I would love that. Okay. So how about coming Please back out to Oregon? Say again? How about coming back to Oregon? Uh, you know, we haven't planned our tour for next year, but there's a good chance that's where we'll head next year. Far out. And, of course, there's always, Heartland. there's always Heartland this summer. Or, you know, we're going to do, we've got several uh, one week, you know, like the week of workshops we're doing now in Fort Lauderdale. We did a workshop Sunday. Uh, we did a workshop last night, tonight. Uh, and through Friday night, we've got a whole week of free workshops. You know, look at our calendar and fly into Florida for a week. Have yourself a little vacation. And take the daytime to be a tourist and come to the workshops at night. We're going to be in two weeks. We're going to be in Sarasota, Florida, doing full six days of, or seven, actually seven days of workshops. Six of those are free. Uh, we're going to be in Ocala two weeks later. We're going to be in um, uh, Tampa uh, the, the, uh, the next week. I, I'm not sure. I don't have the schedule in memory, but uh, go to the website and come and play for a week. Or the first week in April, we're going to do, it looks like we're going to do a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again residential intensive. It's going to be in Palm Harbor, Florida, beautiful sunny place right on the water, a, a dock on the do- water. We'll be probably doing some classes out on the dock. And so, you know, come and join us. Well, I've thought about the summer in uh, at Heartland, you know, don't know. But at any rate, uh, thank you for what you said today. I appreciate it. Cool. And, you know, we've got the free option those several weeks that we'll be doing a full week of workshops. There's one day in each of those weeks where we're doing mind shifters and still point breathing on the Saturday, but otherwise they're all free. There's a paid option, which is that intensive in, uh, in um, April. April 6th, we'll start that. And then at Heartland, the first two weeks at Heartland is going to be a, a kind of an economy program. We're going to do, it's called Food, Fun, Forgiveness, and Work. Food, Work, Fun, and Forgiveness. Where Chef Ari is going to come and he's, going to be, he's got some new recipes he's going to share in the kitchen. We're going to do some, uh, some food work for people who want to gather some of the food skills. And Ari is just the most awesome. And uh, then we'll be doing some work projects on the property. We'll be doing uh, forgiveness and breath work. So, you know, that's going to be an economy program. Again, I don't have the information in front of me, but I think that one's two weeks and the whole thing for food, accommodations, workshop, workshop materials, everything's like something like $70 a day. So it's pretty cheap. And then we'll go into the regular, you know, a nine-day why is this happening to me again, codependence intensive, et cetera, et cetera. So put something on your schedule and come and play. Well, you're sure on my mind, and maybe I hope someday we'll meet eyeball to eyeball. I plan and I on want it. that hug. Okay, great. Right. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay, you got it physically. I I wait till we get it physically. Great. <laughs> All right. I like Bye. that. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, we have two more callers. Eric had seven one six. You're on the air. So. 716, give us a name. Where are you calling from? Um, my name is Audrey. I'm calling from New York. Hi, Audrey. Welcome to the show. How's the weather Hi. in New York right now? Oh, it's beautiful out here. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Yeah. No snow, thank God. So how can we support you? What's happening in your world? What's exciting? Um, I was wondering um, when I would hear from my friend, Sean, <clears throat> so we could move our relationship forward. Right. He's, like, going through a lot, so I just was wondering when I would hear from him. <clears throat> Sorry, I have, like, a cold. 
So are you, are you asking me to, uh, to intuit when you're going to hear from him? Yes. Is that the request? Ah, okay. Well, you've actually got our show mixed up a little bit. Um, Carol Guy's show is on Monday at uh, noon and on Friday at 11. And she does that kind of uh, intuitive sort of thing. Uh, Our show is more about learning forgiveness uh, than it is about, uh, you know, tapping into future or past events and such. So, that's not really something we do on our show, but if you call in on Monday from noon to 1 o'clock, if I remember correctly. No, pardon me. It's 11 till 12 on Mondays, Eastern okay. Time. And then on Fridays, it's noon to 1 o'clock. That will okay, be Carol Gunn. She's the one who does that work. Okay, thank you. All right, delighted. Blessings. Jamie? Okay, our next caller is, uh, oh, they hung up. So I think that it was an Oregon number. If you'll call back in and press one, you were next on the air. But, uh, oh, we have a 541 just called in with their hand up. 541, you're on the air. Who do we have? Hi, it's Julie from Ashland. Hello. Hey, Julie, how are things in Oregon? Um, Real pretty, real pretty. We would love to have you here again. You know, and um, actually, I really want to create a Michael Rice Center here. This is a vision I have of a room that people can come to, and there's listening stations. They can put headphones on, and there will be like three or four screens going with any one of your DVDs, workshops going, and just, you know, and instead of a sports bar with sports and stuff, people can come and hang out and, and hear a few things that might stick, you know. Oh, that's awesome, but but we probably won't have a a bar. We'll probably well, we may have a juice bar. How's how's the juice bar sound? That sounds like a great vision. I'll join and hold that space. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I wasn't I wasn't gonna serve anything. I was gonna let people bring their own snacks, so I don't have to get all involved with food. But just somewhere people right. can come and rest. Cool. Sounds like fun. <laughs> You know, and be nourished, actually. Be nourished by what you teach, and, and it's not about food and entertainment, you know. Right, but different anyway, kind of nourishment. Yeah. Um, I, uh, when I, well, I'm trying to do, I don't even know what to say. My days are varied, and I do what I can, worksheets or whatever I can. And a lot is moving in me, so I, I want you to know I'm in touch, and I'm, um um, the thing that happened yesterday I wanted to report was um, looking in the mirror and hating myself, okay? The hatred was coming up about all the things that I'm not good enough. Sounds like and, a great work, <laughs> I know. But what I did, because one thing that, that I do as a fairly regular practice is reading my commitment to myself in the mirror. And... You know, there are lots of levels of reading and looking at yourself in the mirror, you know, and you can kind of run through it and stay on the surface or you can actually feel each word. And so because I was hating myself, I decided to allow those words to to penetrate and dissolve that hatred. And I started saying things um, like, you know, I mean, it, it evolved, and I can't remember it all, but I really felt how much self-hatred I had for the atrocities, for all the atrocities that I see and judge in the world and actually in the contents of my mind, okay? I was seeing it that way. And gradually as I felt them and saw them, I started asking for help. Well, immediately I was asking for help. Um, from Holy Spirit and Ruka de Kucha. And, um, and I found I, this gratitude that, yes, you know, something is helping me. <laughs> and thank God there's a way out. And so I, I started transferring what I was saying to words of gratitude. Thank you that there is a way out and that it's being done for me and all, whatever came, you know, and it flowed. And it released me from the pain and the viewpoint and um, got me back on track and I was left with a feeling of 
just pure energy and and you know it when when those times happen where I get a really big release, it just feels like the energy that belongs in me, and it's so nice to have it back when that happens. So I wanted to report that, you know, that I'm looking at self-hatred at times when I can. And um, I know that that's not real, but that's what I believe until I really release it. And that's what is at the core of a lot of my behaviors and patterns. So um, just reporting. (laughs) Well, that's a, a great report to have because being in touch with that is the thing that will give you the opportunity to shift and change it all. So are you open to some coaching and some new thoughts? Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yes, did you hear me? Yes. I don't hear you, though. There, is that is that better? Yeah, now I hear you. Okay, okay cool. So what if I told you that you were totally and completely and 100% innocent. Right. (laughs) Even though you've done all that crazy crap. Right. Thank you. Um, You were brought into a world where choice was not an option. You were brought into a world that was already filled with rage and grief and hatred and vengeance, and pain, and drama, and trauma. And you just continued the family legacy. And what I noticed is, and I I can remember a particular day where the four of us were sitting at a park bench out there in Oregon, and you were unloading all of your pain and drama and trauma into my face. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you remember that day? I remember that I day. Do. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and notice that the minute that I could get you to be quiet for a few seconds and listen, that you were ready to make a choice that changed all of that. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was probably from what you've shared with me, the first time in your life that you knew you had a choice about it. And you changed yeah. your mind. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Yeah, and That's it's awesome. been changed it's been changed ever since and I'm committed to that and so it's working for me because I invite healing. So so you weren't all those horrible things that deserved help self hatred you just carried the legacy of the insane generations. And mm-hmm. the minute that you saw that there was an option, you took it. And you started to change your choices. Mm-hmm. So that makes you one of a few on the planet who knows that we could be doing this differently. And then you set about not only doing it differently in your life, but supporting other people in doing it differently. That doesn't sound like somebody who deserves self-hatred to me. That's somebody who deserves, that sounds like somebody who deserves self-appreciation and accolades and somebody to put their head and hands together and clap for them. Thank you. But if you don't change that thought of self-hatred, then you're going to get to do more self-hatred. Oh. And all you have to do, just like that day when finally we were able to get quiet enough, you know, as all that drama and trauma was going on and you were assuring me as how I was the problem in your life, (laughs) just like that day, the minute that you get to choice and go, ah, I don't have to be doing self-hatred, I can change this, you're going to change it all. So, you know, there's a statement in the scriptures of strength to strength. Here a little, there a little. And notice that you're changing it. You've made the choice to do something different. Now, making the choice to do something different doesn't mean it's all going to change tonight. It's a process. It takes time. It takes work. 
It takes energy. And I acknowledge you for the level of commitment you have in your process, for the early phase that you are in doing this work, and I acknowledge you for the work you've done and that you're doing. I think it's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I could do more, and I I am. I'm doing the more every day. <laughs> cool. So so be careful about getting lost in that. Oh, I should have done more. Um. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Tomorrow you'll be able to do more in the next day. And the next day, be careful that your good old family feeling and the good old family pattern of I didn't do it good enough doesn't slip back in when today you realize you could have done it better and tomorrow you're going to do it better, that you don't slip into that old pattern of, oh, see, I'm not good enough. I didn't do it that good, that well. Mm, And acknowledge yourself from day to day and go from strength to strength. Here a little, there a little. And the, the, the voice that speaks to you about these shifts and changes will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. And you're right on track. So that sure really helps. Is it helping me today? Is it, uh, well, I, I have to work on my taxes, which is very taxing. And I uh, I've put it off for a long time because of the stuff that brings up. And I'm asking for love to, you know, be with me through it and 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 just, you know, not the self hatred. So, so yeah, um, I, I'm going to learn a lot, and I'm going. I guess worksheets would probably help. So remember the mind shifters tool. Remember the mind shifters tool for mind shifters is toy for still point reading. You got a pen? I'd love to give you a mind shifter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have paper and pen. Yes. Okay. So the mind shifter I'd like to offer you is, and if you'd write this down. Okay. It's fun, healing, okay, and easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me to do my taxes. For me to do my taxes. Okay. Yeah. Now, what you'll do with that mind shifter, and for those who aren't familiar with the mind shifter tool, we do a workshop called Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing where we teach this tool called the mind shifter tool. What you do is you take a piece of paper, and I know you know how to do this, but I'm explaining it for others. You take a piece of paper and you write, you divide the page page in two, and you write that thought on the left-hand side of the page. And on the right-hand side of the page, You write every thought that comes up in response to that, and as you write it, you let yourself get in touch with everything that's in your mind that goes against that thought, and you clean it up step by step. As you uncover things, like for instance, uh, you might get in touch with, say, a thought that goes like, oh, you know, I hate being stolen from through taxes. So then you'd go, oh, okay, so now my mind uses taxes as an excuse to justify its hatred. So now I'm going to do some forgiveness work and dump hatred from my field. Um, I'm, uh, I'm frustrated by all the details in that paperwork. So now I get to realize and I get to do some worksheets around my mind uses paperwork and details as a reason for its frustration. Let, let me share with you a, uh, a worksheet that I I did this morning. I got on the phone with somebody, a company that um, was being really not very smart about its products. And, you know, it took me 30 minutes to get a simple piece of information that the salesperson should have known right off the bat. So I'm sitting on hold and, and my frustration levels building. And so when I, when I finished uh, the call, actually, I, I hadn't actually finished the call. I pulled the worksheet out and started to do a worksheet on my frustration around this caller not knowing what they were doing and how, you know, plain stupid it was that they didn't know this simple answer. I should have been able to be off the phone in two minutes, and about 38 minutes later I actually put that call on hold and called back into the company again and got a supervisor. 
So it took about 45 minutes of my day. But here was my discovery in the worksheet that I did. When I was a kid, my father expected me to understand everything that he understood just like he understood it. And when I didn't get it instantly, there was this barrage of anger and, you know, words about being stupid and, you know, what's wrong with you and that and that and that. And what I discovered is I did that worksheet as I'm sitting waiting on the phone for this person who's acting rather inept. (laughs) What I discovered is that all over my body was this power person energy of judgment and pain about myself for not being smart enough. Mm. And I was using this person on the phone who should have given me an answer in two minutes, very much like when I was a kid, you know, my dad asked a question, and if I didn't have the answer right there instantly on the adult level like he would have it, then I was labeled stupid and he was raging. Mm-hmm. I wasn't at a point where I was raging on the phone, but I certainly could feel this push in my body for, come on, you guys, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Which is exactly what my dad's energy was. So a, a rediscovery for me, again, uh, of a power person dynamic and how the power person dynamics, when you come across an issue where you're cleaning up a power person dynamic, there won't necessarily be a specific thought to get in touch with that causes the feeling. It's just an energy that you absorb from your power person because you had the same genetics. And so what our minds do is they say, I'm angry because, I'm sad because, I'm afraid because, I'm this because. And there's no because for it. The only because is that energy's in my structure And my mind can turn it into anything out there as being the cause of it. But nothing out there is the cause. The cause is what's resident here. And as I forgive, and that was, you know, it it was a really nice worksheet for me. It was a real sweet worksheet. You know, I'm on hold. They're actually playing some quiet music in the background. So I've got this music playing while I'm simmering down and letting go of my push and my frustration at this person not answering the way they should have instantly, just like I didn't answer instantly to my dad. Like, a, you know, I should have been like this little adult that should have known everything that he knew. Mm-hmm. So awesome. recognize those dynamics, and you get to, with the worksheets, you get to clean them up one by one by one. Yeah, thanks and for I'm reminding out, me. Oh, by the way, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm sitting out here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say hello to Maria. I'm sitting out here in a pair of shorts in this this beautiful South Florida sun at Maria's home. Thank you, Maria Colmenares, for keeping me uh, here. And uh, she just came out. I'm sitting actually in the in the in the doorway of the garage, and she's just coming out to get in the car and drive away. You know, Thank Michael, you. I think it's so great how you just find yourself wherever you are, and, and wherever you are, you you connect with the rest of us. Wherever you, I mean, it's so great. It's such a demonstration of connecting to source wherever we are. <laughs> well, I'm blessed by the awesome people that I get to play with all over the planet. I am absolutely blessed, and I'm sitting in this, uh, you know, this space right now where I'm I'm sitting actually on the edge of the garage, so I'm actually in the sun. You know, you get 20 minutes of sun between 11 and 3 anywhere on the planet, and you get what's called UVB2. It's the only time you can get it is from 11 till 2. When you get your vitamin D3 levels up enough from getting enough UVB2, you actually eliminate about 40% of cancer. Oh, I think I heard you say that before. And I can't remember where I heard it. You strengthen immunity. You do all kinds of awesome things for yourself. Now, of course, we've got a culture that teaches us the sun is our enemy. As a naturopath, the sun is one of the greatest healers. It's one of our best friends. You've got to get 20 minutes a day full-on sun or at least have a full-spectrum light that you get under every day in order to keep your immune system up, to modulate the uh, areas in the brain that keep you in a happy state. 
You know, there's what they call SAD, seasonal affective disorder, and that's for people who don't get sunlight in their eyes. And when you don't get sunlight in your, their eyes, the pineal gland, which is a, a, a consumer of full-spectrum light, doesn't get its nutrients. When you don't get the nutrients, you don't get to produce what your body needs. Now, Michael, By the way, you be outside? Anybody... Do, do you need I'm to be outside, outside yeah. or can it be through a window? No, the window will tend to uh, filter out some of the rays. Now you want okay. full sunlight. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to and do by that the right way, so if you know of anyone, if there's anybody that's on the show that has dark skin, especially if you're pregnant, please, please, please get out in the sunlight. D3 for a child in utero is a neurosteroid. People with black skin tend not to produce the D3 because of the pigmentation of the sick skin. They need more sunlight than anybody else. And that baby needs the D3 as the neurosteroid that will give it proper and full brain development. So anybody that you know that's, especially if they're pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant, uh, get out there and get sunlight. The cancer rates in the black community are outrageous. You need more sunlight or at least supplement with D3, and there's nothing like the real thing. The skin generates or manufactures the D3 out of full-spectrum light. Your pineal may gland... I ask, go ahead. May, may I ask, does it just take, like, your arms and hands and your face? Is that enough if you're all bundled up or something? I mean, you, is, is that enough? You, you're, you're going to need more than 20 minutes if it's just your arms, arms your hands, and your face. You want to get as much of your body exposed as you can. You know, okay. get out in the nude and lay in the snow. It's perfect. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you want you want as much skin surface as possible. It's the surface of the skin that manufactures the D3. Okay. And, and you've got to do it between 11 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the only time, and it doesn't matter. It's, you know, there's something magical about this. It's the only time on planet Earth anywhere on the earth that the UVB2 comes in that manufactures or contributes to the manufacture of the D3. And so that's what you need to do. And so if you're in, you know, equator or southern latitudes in the summer, no, you don't want to be out there at high noon. That is too intense of sunlight. That's, you know, that's when you want to go out at 2, 2.30 in the afternoon and get a half an hour of sun or at 11 o'clock. And even that, maybe it's a little too much. So, now, you started to say something about the adrenal gland, I think, when I interrupted you, I think. No, no, it wasn't, uh, wasn't putting the adrenals into the uh, conversation. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for everything. We're yeah. delighted to be chatting with you. My goodness, we're only a few minutes away from completion of the show already. These hours go by so quickly. So any other thoughts for us, Julie? I gave all my thoughts, I think. Oh, Jeannie. <laughs> and is, is uh, that young man Edward back on the road again? Hi, come on in. Hi. Are you with us, Julie? Are you with Am I with you? I just got someone at my door. Oh, okay. Hello? Well, I'll let you go then. Tell Ed we said hello. Bye. Okay, blessings. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, Jeannie, anything going on in the chat room? Any questions? Any thoughts? No, everything's been uh, pretty quiet. Um, let's see, somebody did ask, uh, why do we get fed by experts that the sun is so bad, such as premature aging, cancer, et cetera? Um, it's taken out of proportion. Um, too much sun is bad at a human level or challenging. Well, you can, you can kill yourself by drinking gallons and gallons and gallons of water every day, but that doesn't mean water's bad. Yes, you can get excessive sun. However, the problem with skin cancer has not got to do with the sun. The problem with skin cancer is people who are nutrient deficient, who are malnourished. That means they're grossly overweight or they're not getting the nutrients that they need in order to feed the skin. There's where the skin cancer comes from. It's not coming from the sun. But it's a great sales pitch for uh, for all the filters and all the garbage that's sold to try to keep you from uh, from getting any sun on your skin. Well, 
when there's a big difference in getting out there for 20 minutes and getting out there for four hours, too. Yes. Absolutely. So do we have any questions or thoughts from anybody? No, it looks like that's about it. We're down to about five minutes. There's nobody else with their hand up. Okay. Anything in the chat room? No, that was bad enough. Did Dr. Tim make it today? No, he didn't. Oh, well, bless his heart. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about the support group from uh, from tonight for Dr. Tim, or is it last night? Last night. No, tonight's the support group out there. So anybody in Chicago, there's a support group. Dr. Tim, actually, he's in Woodstock, uh, about uh, oh, 45 minutes up on the northwest side of Chicago. I know Rex uh, in uh, Lansing, Michigan, and these things are all on our website. Rex is... Uh, a workshop this weekend in Lansing, and I know that, um, uh, let's see, Jeanette Houdon jorgensen out in Salt Lake City has got, uh, actually she's doing two support groups a week now out in Salt Lake City, Sandy, Utah, so you can tap into that. I don't know, did you get those emails, Jeannie? Have you, is that on the site yet? I did not get any. Okay, well, I'll forward it to you. Maybe she just wrote it to me, but I'll forward it to you, and if you would, you can pop it on the website. But she's doing, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday nights. She's showing the videos and uh, and doing um, worksheets with folks. So that's cool. If you're in South Florida, we're in Fort Lauderdale right now, or I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Jeannie's still back in Bristol, Tennessee. Hold the space for all that's happening there for her, if you would. And uh, Fort Lauderdale tonight uh, being Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. There will be a series of free workshops tonight. We're doing the circle of life and how to play it. Last night we did healing through relationships. Uh, and then through Friday we're doing getting the stress you need. Thursday's codependence to interdependence will be at the CSL at Center for Spiritual Living in Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And then in two weeks we'll be in Sarasota doing a week of workshops there. Uh, the first week in April, April 6th, uh, it looks like we're going to do a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again? We were originally going to do codependence, but a couple of folks who were jumping on the bandwagon to commit to that said they wanted to do uh, the nine-day Why so that they'd be able to come out and do teacher training this summer. And uh, so we're going to shift that one to Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive. And in that intensive, we're going to cover of course, why is this happening to me again? Healing through relationships, communication. Did you hear what I think I said? Purpose, personal power, and commitment, empowered to heal, mind shifters, hands-on energy field work, and still point breathing. So that's what we'll be doing uh, the 6th of, uh, of April. So it'll be over Easter weekend. It'll be a great time. It'll be great support energy on the planet for that healing process and resurrecting from the insanity of the world of hostility and fear and stepping into our eternal being and our eternal lives as human beings. And if you doubt your existence as a human being, you'll start to remember if you go find a newborn child and hold them. That will define for you perfectly exactly what a human life is. And we are here to support you in living a truly fully human life. We invite you to come and join us and play with us. If you uh, miss out on any of those workshops that we're doing here in Florida, uh, we'll probably be doing some things back up toward the center of the country. If you want us to be in your direction, give us a call. Let us know, and we'll see if we can work it in uh, on into May, June. I actually just got an invitation from some folks in Anchorage, Alaska, for June, so I don't know. We may end up up in Anchorage this uh, June, and uh, we'll be uh, doing a 65-day intensive at Heartland starting July. Uh, we'll be doing the two-week uh fun forgiveness, work, and food program, an economy program at Heartland, and then going into a 65-day intensive with six different modules. Check out the website, and you'll see what all those different modules are. Each one stands on its own. So we appreciate being with you, and we support you creating the best year yet of your eternal life. Blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday 
on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com. 